Welcome to Legal Luminance, where we shed light on the darkest corners of the legal system. Today, we delve into a story of egregious abuse of power that shocked the conscience of a nation, the Abner Luma case of 1997. Viewer discretion is advised. In the early hours of August 9, 1997, Abner Luama, a Haitian immigrant, found himself at the center of a nightmarish ordeal that exposed the grim reality of police brutality. The incident not only ignited outrage across the United States, but also became a pivotal moment in the fight against institutionalized violence within the NYPD. Born on November 24, 1966, in Thomason, Haiti, Abner's journey to America was filled with hope and aspirations. His pursuit of the American dream brought him to Brooklyn, New York, in 1991. Trained as an electrical engineer in Haiti, Abner faced the hard reality of unrecognized qualifications. He worked as a security guard, supporting his family while holding on to his dreams. But one fateful night in 1997 outside a Brooklyn nightclub, Abner Louis' life changed forever. What began as an altercation outside Club Renda's Vu spiraled into a horrific incident of police brutality that shocked the nation. Arrested and brutally assaulted by officers of the NYPD, Abner's ordeal in the back of a patrol car and later at the 17th Precinct Station House was a grave miscarriage of justice. The details of what followed are harrowing. Luoma was taken to the 70th precinct, where he was brutally beaten. But the true horror occurred in the precinct's bathroom, where, according to Luoma's testimony, he was sexually assaulted with a broken broom handle by officers Justin Volp and Charles Schwartz. The sexual assault stunned the nation when they learned that Volp violently assaulted Luoma and proceeded to use a broken broomstick handle to sodomize him, perforating his rectum and bladder inside the 70th precinct. In 1997, that Haitian immigrant Abner Loima was mistakenly accused of being involved in a fight at a nightclub in Flatbush. Cops with Brooklyn's 70th precinct then beat and sexually assaulted Loima with a plunger at the station house. The incident didn't stay hidden for long. The brutal attack left him in dire need of three major surgeries and two months of hospitalization. Luama's story sparked a citywide, then national outcry. Protests erupted, demanding justice and reform within the NYPD. Thousands marched, demanding accountability, while Amnesty International highlighted the case in their report on the United States, underlining the urgent need to address police brutality. Officer Volpe is only one of the many that must be prosecuted in this case. Each officer who was inside the precinct on the day that this event took place should also be brought up on criminal charges and at a minimum administrative charges. A plea of conspiracy without naming the co-conspirators is an incomplete plea. We feel he should name them and that all of them ought to be remanded today. New York would be a safer place if anyone that would engage in this was taken off the streets. An investigation was launched, leading to the arrest of the officers involved. 
The trial revealed a disturbing narrative of unprovoked violence and abuse. Officer Volp eventually pled guilty mid-trial, while Schwarz was convicted of perjury and obstruction of justice. Volp pleaded guilty to six of the 12 counts in the indictment. The legal battles that followed were complex and controversial. Officers were charged, convictions were made and overturned, but ultimately, justice served its course with sentences handed down, including a 30-year prison term for officer just involved. I think that in a scale of one to 10, Volpe's apology was a minus one. He did only what he thought he had to do. He clearly did not address the pain he's caused this man. He will finally be forced to face the reality of the crimes that he committed over two years ago. Crimes against two innocent men and crimes against the rule of law in this city. Abner Luima survived, but was left with permanent injuries. He became an advocate for victims of police brutality, using his voice to push for change and hold law enforcement accountable. With the largest civil settlement for police brutality at the time, he founded the Abner Luima Foundation, dedicated to establishing hospitals and community centers. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, a twist in the tale of justice emerged. As the world grappled with an unprecedented health crisis, Volp sought mercy from the very system he once served. His plea for early release, a consequence of the pandemic's grip on prison populations, was granted. Justin Volp, sentenced to 30 years for the infamous assault of Abner Luima, finds himself in community confinement after serving 24 years, a consequence of the pandemic's unforeseen reach. The former NYPD officer behind the brutal 1997 assault of Abner Luima has been released from federal prison. Justin Volpe let out six years early and is now back in New York. Fox 5's Linda Schmitz in the newsroom with the details. Linda. Yeah, hi there, Stephen Natasha. Well, Justin Volpe was sentenced to 30 years in prison. He served 24. Now he is back at home in Staten Island under home confinement. Now, Volpe had pleaded to, to sodomizing Haitian immigrant Abner Luima with a broom handle inside a bathroom at Sanctum, Brooklyn, in August of 1997. Volpe was a 27-year-old police officer at the time. Mr. Luima underwent two surgeries and was in the hospital for more than a month. Now, this was an attack that shocked not only the city, but the entire country. Mr. Luima is now living in Miami, Florida. His lawyer telling me that he has gone on with his life, has a wonderful family, and that he has no interest in speaking with the media about this issue. Now, as for Volpe being released, attorney Sanford Rubenstein had this to say. While I believe he should have served his full sentence, 24 years, let that send a message to police officers all over this country that if you do what he did, you will go to jail for a very, very long time. Now, in an interview with the New York Post, Volpe said that he has nothing but love in his heart for Abner Luima, and he wants to rebuild his life. Stephen, Natasha, back upstairs to you. All right, thanks, Linda. Abner Luima, forever marked by that fateful act, stands in the light of his faith, declaring forgiveness as a virtue he embraces. The Abner Luima case is a sobering reminder of the vigilance needed to protect the most vulnerable among us from those who abuse their power. It's a call to action for ongoing reform and a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable cruelty. What must Luima be feeling in this moment? The world continues to spin, but for him, does seeing Volp's new chapter of freedom feel like a rewinding of time, a reopening of wounds that never quite healed? Thank you for joining us on Legal Luminance. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into legal cases that shape our world. Until next time, stay informed and stay vigilant. Hey,